Welcome, everybody, to the serene opening screen of Mass Effect 1. Ah, oh, this music, it's making me feel things. It's definitely making me feel things. So, I mentioned at the end of my Elite Force series that I was thinking of doing a Mass Effect series. I have mentioned to several of you watching that I was thinking of doing a Mass Effect series. And this morning, I woke up and I thought, screw it, let's do a Mass Effect series. So I leapt out of bed, I threw my N7 hoodie on over my Disney princess pyjamas, I sat down... And then I had to spend an hour and a half faffing around with the settings to get the game to work with my recording software. Yes, an hour and a half. I finally managed to get it working though. I had to go into the game files uh, and I had to manually cap off the FPS at 30. And that managed to get it working. Um, so we are running at 30 FPS rather than 60, but it should hold up fine, hopefully. There may still be a little lag here and there. Um, that's just an issue Mass Effect 1 has always had on Windows 10. It, there's a little bit of lag, you know, the audio crackles now and then. It's an old game. It happens. But hopefully it should hold up fine. Because uh, for a minute there, I was nearly losing hope that I wouldn't be able to do a Mass Effect playthrough. But I can. So this is going to be a complete playthrough of all three games, hopefully. Uh, may take a wee break between each game, we'll just see how I feel. Uh, videos will be twice weekly on Sundays and Wednesdays, at least that is the current plan that I have literally just come up with when I said it just now. I haven't exactly planned this, alright? I literally just woke up this morning and on a whim decided I'm going to do a Mass Effect playthrough. So this is going to be a Renegade Insanity playthrough, which means that I will be playing a predominantly Renegade Shepherd on Insanity mode. Now there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, my original plan was just to do a insanity run. Uh, and then I thought, you know what? That's kind of boring. A lot of people do insanity runs. That's a really common thing to do. And actually, I always play on insanity anyway. Uh, it seemed kind of daft to make a big deal about it going, oh, it's going to be an insanity run when I always play on insanity. So that's not really a big deal for me at all. And also, despite 30 plus playthroughs of Mass Effect, I have never played a Renegade Shepherd. Ever. Because I, probably like a lot of people, assumed that Renegade meant psychopath. I assumed that going Renegade meant being evil and everybody hating you and falling out with everybody and, you know, just generally creating a horrible world that I wouldn't want to be a part of. And then one of my friends said to me, No, Renegade does not mean psychopath. You can be a good Renegade. You can be a, a Renegade Shepherd who does good things, like doesn't kill Rex on Vermeer and doesn't get everybody killed on the suicide mission and is friends with everybody and still gets on with your companions. And I thought, that sounds brilliant. I want to be a good renegade shepherd. So we are going to play a renegade shepherd who is all tough and hard and badass on the outside but inside is really a squishy little bunny rabbit who just wants to be friends with everybody and make the universe a better place. That is my current plan for this playthrough. So if we start a new Welcome career... Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Connect the database. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. Okay, now this is where I am in slightly new territory, or at least territory I haven't visited in a while, because if we go for select existing ID, I have two shepherds. I have Jules, who is my colonist soul survivor vanguard. She's the one I write all the fan fictions about. Uh, she's sort of my canon, if you like. And I have Raven, my Earthborn war hero infiltrator. And would you believe Raven was called Raven before I had a YouTube channel where I named RPG characters after birds? These are the only two Shepherds I have ever played as, and I have their save files backed up in about 12 different places, and whenever I want to do a playthrough, I just pick one of them and I play through as one of them. This means that I haven't touched the character creator in years, and as you probably know, it's not a great character creator. Most of the custom Shepherds that you see around look like horrific mutant freaks. However, Jules and Shepard are both gorgeous works of art. I mean, look at them. They are beautiful. They're wonderful. They're brilliant. And now I have to go back into that flipping character creator and try and create a third one who is comparable. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so if we enter a new ID and we go custom Please female. Please in to access your program. And name. I hadn't actually thought this far ahead, so give me a minute. Phoenix. That sounds like a good name for a Shepard, doesn't it? Confirm pre-service history. So, uh, you know, my other two were colonist at Earthborn. Spacer is the only one I've never used, so we'll go with that one. Confirm psychological profile. And again, Ruthless is the only one I've never used, and we are going Renegade. So we're going to be a Ruthless Renegade, guys. Who's, you know, really all soft and squishy on the inside. So, class. Now, I've given this a bit of thought. 
So Vanguard and Infiltrator are my two favourites. They're the ones I enjoy the most. They're the ones I've played as the most. Therefore, I dismissed them out of hand because I thought we're going to do something new. Um, Soldier and Engineer, they're kind of all right. I mean, I don't enjoy Soldier particularly. I don't mind Soldier, but I don't like actively enjoy it. Engineer is quite fun, but I don't think it will be quite as fun to watch. Um, and I kind of want to be a biotic because... <laughs> To be honest, nothing beats being able to launch shockwaves into uh, piles of husks. Like, that is like the one of the highlights of the games for me, is just being able to launch shockwaves at husks while they're running at you. It's one of my favourite things. So I wanted to be a biotic. Uh, now this leaves us with Adept and Sentinel. Now I have played as Sentinel before, and I know a lot of people really like Sentinel. I personally found it quite boring. I didn't really like Sentinel much at all. I thought it was quite just sort of nothing in particular. Um, which leaves us with Adept. Now I've never played Adept. Which is strange for somebody who loves playing biotics. I usually just go for Vanguard. But uh, never played Adept before. So I thought we would go with that. We are going to be a ruthless, badass renegade who also happens to be a biotic goddess. That sounds marvellous to me. Uh, bonus talent. Oh, no, that's a choice, isn't it? Sniper rifles or shotguns or first aid. First aid doesn't seem like a very renegade thing, does it? Well, what fits Adept best? It would be shotguns, wouldn't it? I mean, adepts, adepts are going to be up in the action, right? We'll go shotguns. Confirm facial identification. Okay, well, <laughs> if we go change appearance, and now I'm going to have to dive into this character creator and try and create something that doesn't look horrific. So, um, wish me luck. The trouble with most of these custom shepherds is they just look like permanently bored all of the time. You know, one of my pet hates about character creators is not letting you see the back of your character's head. Who in their right mind would have a character creator where you can't see the back of your character's head? Oh, now I can't get a head to center. Okay, just look at me. Just look, look, no, look at me, Shepard. Shepard, we're getting off on the wrong foot here, Phoenix. Hmm, does that hair say renegade or librarian? I can't quite decide. Oh, I could give her blonde hair and then dark eyebrows and everybody would know she's not a natural blonde. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that idea. Ooh, blimey, those are evil eyebrows, aren't they? Do they, are they? Would you say they were renegade eyebrows or just psychopath eyebrows? I'm not sure. Aw, those are sad eyebrows. Aw, kind of like those ones. Those are sort of like superior eyebrows. Those are like, you know, I'm better than you are eyebrows. Now, you see, I can't get her properly in profile to figure out how her bloody nose looks. I mean, seriously, why would you create a character creator where you can't rotate 360 degrees? I don't understand! Wow, Shepard looks bloody awful without eyeshadow on, doesn't she? Blimey neck. I mean, like, most people look better without makeup on, genuinely. I mean, I never wear makeup. I look much better without makeup on. Um, eh, Shepard kind of does genuinely look really crap without makeup on. <laughs> All right. Now, do we go for, like, nice light makeup? Or do we go for dark, sensual makeup? Or do we just go for, like, red for Renegade? Doesn't really go with our eyes, though, does it? Hmm. I could do with a nice green one. That's what I really need. We'll go, we'll go dark and sensual. Could give her pink lipstick. We could give her, like, Barbie pink lipstick. That would... <laughs> if that suits Renegade Shepherd's persona. Um, I'm kind of tempted by the dark one, actually. Kind of nice, isn't it? I sort of love the idea of Renegade Shepherd having pink lipstick. Oh, pink or dark? I can't decide. No, I think I'm going to go dark. I think I quite like that. Okay, so I've done my best and this is what I've come up with. I think she looks pretty much fine. I think. At least she does here. I mean, you can never quite tell until you actually get into the game, can you? Like, you create a wonderful, brilliant character in the character creator. Will you look at me, Phoenix? There we go. You create a wonderful, brilliant character in the character creator, and then you get into the game and you see the first cutscene and you just think, wow, how could I have got that so wrong? But I think, I think she's all right, so we're gonna finalize Reconstruction that. complete. So, Phoenix, Shepard, Spacer, Ruthless, Adept, Shotguns. <laughs> Okay, that is what she put on her CV. Space of Ruthless Adept Shotguns. And uh, that got her into the Alliance. With the biotic glow, she suddenly looks like a redhead. That's kind of quite cool. Uh, right, anyway, yes, jump into that. Yes, I will confirm Identification that. Identification confirmed. Combat difficulty, we'll put that up to Insanity. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't on Insanity to begin with. Auto level up off, target assist, normal. Quad power usage is active, subtitles, we'll put the subtitles on. Auto save, yes, marvellous. Well, 
what about Shepard? She's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of her life. Military service runs in the family. Both her parents were in the Navy. She got most of her unit killed on Torfin. She gets the job done, no matter what the cost. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to furthest to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space-time. And I didn't read the rest of it. They call it Mass Effect, that's what the general thing was. And that is pretty much the only time that Mass Effect will ever be mentioned in the Mass Effect games ever again. <laughs> the Arcturus Prime Relay is in range. Initiating oh. transmission sequence. This is my favourite bit, I love this bit. Well, I mean, she looks alright from the back. We're about to see whether she looks alright from the front. <laughs> this is always the moment. This is the moment where you realise whether you've created a good character or not. All stations secure for transit. frown lines. I'm gonna say that. She looks like she's had a bit of a rough early life, but that's fine. <laughs> Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having him on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Okay, this is going to be really weird playing as a different shepherd after all of these years. This is going to be very strange. But we are a renegade, so we will be sticking mostly to the bottom half of the uh, conversation wheel. That's enough. Your soldiers act like it. Oh, I like her already. <laughs> Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Yes, I heard, Joker. I'm on my way. <laughs> Is it me or does the Captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Okay, I got my first two renegade points. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing that flashing up on the screen. Oh, it is nice to be walking around the old Normandy again. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since I've played this, actually, so it's kind of nice to be back. It's also nice to uh, see the old N7 armor, because uh, because I usually just play with, um, you know, characters I've already played as. When it jumps in, you get all of the equipment that you had from the last game. So I haven't seen the N7 armor in a long, long while. Uh, I'm also not used to having to like level up and stuff because I've usually got all of my uh, skills and stuff already set so I might be a bit rusty when it comes to stuff like that actually. Uh, hey Presley! Congratulations Commander, looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the Captain? Yes, he wants to see me. I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect ma'am, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. <gasps> what do you mean by that? Oh actually she looks really pretty doesn't she? 
Oh, I'm actually quite pleased with her, the way the light's hitting her and everything. Uh, right, yes, uh, what do you mean by that, Presley? Do you think the Alliance brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Well, that's a nice bit of exposition set up that the game's done for us there, so we may as well investigate. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Who started the first contact war again? I can't actually remember. I think it was the Turians, wasn't it? Started the first contact war, I think. Which means it's kind of fair that a lot of humans don't really like um, Turians. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, the humans are so racist in Mass Effect. I think, you know, a lot of the time they've actually got calls. And uh, yes, he's also a Spectre and nobody likes Spectres. Nihilus is no ordinary Turian. You've got that right, Commander. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Yeah, so that's just a nice bit of ominous setup for the uh, the mission there, and then I believe we're I going to talk to uh, Dr. Chuckwast. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Oh, I like Jenkins. Hey, Jenkins. You're one of my favorites. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Ah, uh, part of the job, Doc. <laughs> Marines are meant to fight. You just fix us up and we're done. I know how things work, Commander. I've seen my share of combat, but it's foolish to go looking for trouble. You could both take a lesson from the Captain. He's not afraid of combat, but he knows the value of restraint, too. Sorry, Doc, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Yeah, you're right, Doc. Phoenix is a bit of a tit, but you know, renegade run. <laughs> okay, well, we've already talked about Nihilus and the Spectres, so we'll talk about Eden Prime. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But... When I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. And then I'm just going to ask this junior officer why we're going there, because apparently he might know more than me. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on Torfin. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Don't play the hero, Jenkins. That's definitely my job. This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not going to screw this up. Yeah, I'm sure it'll go swimmingly, darling. Don't you worry yourself. Me. Goodbye, right. Commander. More renegade points, marvelous. Oh, can I open the galaxy map? Oh. Oh. Not the commanding officer yet. Oh well. Okay. In to talk to Nihilus. Hey, Nihilus. I'm probably going to shout at you because I'm a renegade. <laughs> Never done that before. I'm usually quite polite to you. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I'm a marine, not some tourist on vacation. It's more than just a tourist destination, isn't it, Shepard? Eden Prime is a symbol of your people. A perfect little world on the edges of your territory. Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Are you trying to scare me, Spectre? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? 
I think it's about time we told the commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Yes, that is in fact obvious. I do believe the game has been pointing that at us, like, pretty much from the beginning. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. I don't like being kept in the dark, Captain. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why did we tell the Council? I'm not going to say that. All right, we may be a renegade, but I'm not going to be like a total tit. Um, I don't really want to say we don't need your help here. This is going to be so hard playing as a renegade, Shepard. Like, I already don't like her. You know what? Let's go for you, sound worried. Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. Since when do we answer to the Spectres? You're smart enough to know how things work, Commander. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. A grim business, but you got the job done. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Oh, no, would she say what if I refuse, or would she say what's the next step? Uh, I'm trying to get into Phoenix's mindset here. I'm trying to get into our head, right? I'm trying to, you know... We're gonna get through this together, me and you, Phoenix, all right? We may not be the best buddies right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna work this out together, okay? I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say... Uh, I don't know... <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go for what if I refuse. I don't like people making decisions about my future. This isn't about you, Shepard. Humanity needs this. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Okay, Marvelous, let's get on with it then. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden- Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need- Oh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it! There it is! <laughs> oh, I love that bit. Still gives me shivers, you know. Even to this day, still gives me shivers. Everything cuts out after that. No calm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold of 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and Ooh, oh, she's got a good hold. scowl. I'll give her that. She's got a good scowl. I do love a good shepherd scowl. Kalilenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in.
Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Um, you know what? Phoenix strikes me as the distrustful sort. I don't like putting my life in the hands of a Turian, sir. Nihilus is on our side. He wants you in the Spectres, and he wants that peak. Fair enough. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. And here we are on sunny Eden Prime, where everything is peaceful and idyllic and slightly on fire, but we won't worry about that. I believe we're going to hold things off there for the moment. I think we've made a pretty decent start. We've created a brand new Shepherd. We're just, you know, getting to know her. I think me and her are going to get on fine eventually once we've figured each other out. And next time we will tackle Eden Prime. But until then, I shall say farewell.